Good morning, and thank you for joining us here on NASA Select for live coverage and updates of the Space Shuttle Columbia's preparations for mission STS-65. The space shuttle arrived here at Kennedy Space Center, launch pad 39A, about 6 a.m. this morning. Technicians are now making preparations to start moving the rotating serving service structure into place around the vehicle. Launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia is scheduled for July 8th at 12.43 p.m. Work was completed early. As with all space shuttle Orbiter processing, stay in High Bay 2 work was closed. only 77 Here at Kennedy days. Space Center, work on Columbia During began. this time, technicians installed the International Microgravity Laboratory 2 and accomplished several additional achievements as well. These achievements included change out of a hydrogen tank on the vehicle's cryogenic pallet. Installed on the Columbia in mid-1992, the cryogenic pallet supplies extra propellants to the space shuttle, allowing the vehicle to stay in space much longer. For example, the average flight time for shuttles without a cryogenic pallet is nine days. With this type of pallet, an orbiter's average flight time is extended to 16 days. Other Columbia processing achievements for this flow include torque box modification of the payload bay doors, which adds stiffness to the bay doors to improve the vehicle's tolerance to wind shears. Because wind is always a factor in launch decisions, it is hoped that this modification will extend the vehicle's shear wind launch capability. During its stay, the Columbia also received 163 new tile bonds. Rollover of the Space Shuttle Columbia from the Orbiter Processing Facility to the Vehicle Assembly Building occurred at 6.07 p.m. last Wednesday, June 8th. Originally scheduled for 9 a.m., the event was delayed for several hours by one of our traditional Florida thunderstorms. When the sky finally cleared late in the afternoon, managers took quick advantage of the sunshine and blue skies to begin a flawless move to the Vehicle Assembly Building's High Bay 1. Rollover operations are performed using the orbiter transporter, which is really a one-of-a-kind transportation system. In fact, it's the only one we have. The vehicle was originally designed to move space shuttle orbiters across the mountainous terrain at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Of course, the roads at Kennedy Space Center are not nearly as challenging, but the vehicle has still proven to be quite beneficial. For example, before the orbiter transporter arrived at Kennedy Space Center, rollover operations were performed by towing the shuttle with its landing gear down to the vehicle assembly building. This often resulted in minor tire damage, which required tire changeouts in the vehicle assembly building. Now that we use the orbiter transporter, the tires put on the orbiter in the processing facility are the same tires that will stay on the shuttle until it lands back on Earth at the conclusion of its mission. While the Space Shuttle Columbia was making its move to the Vehicle Assembly Building, the Space Shuttle Discovery was making the same journey in reverse. While Columbia was in High Bay 2, Discovery was in the Vehicle Assembly Building with its purge air on, awaiting its opportunity to take Columbia's place in the processing facility. Now that Columbia has moved, work has begun in the processing bay to prepare the Space Shuttle Discovery for mission STS-64, which is scheduled for launch this fall. Once inside the Vehicle Assembly Building, preparations begin to mate the Orbiter Columbia to the external tank and solid rocket booster stack. Lifting operations began the evening that the vehicle rolled in. Early lifting is performed by 250-ton cranes, which raise the Orbiter using slings mounted on the Orbiter's forward and aft sections. Once raised, the aft beam and sling were removed and the orbiter was rotated to a vertical position. The orbiter was then lifted over the building's 16th floor crossover beam. Once in position, the vehicle was soft mated to the external tank and solid rocket booster stack. During soft mate, the vehicle was lined up to the proper connection points and configured for final mate. After numerous systems verifications and closeouts, the Space Shuttle Columbia was prepared for rollout, the 3.4-mile trip to the launch pad. All essential personnel were on station at 8 p.m. Tuesday evening. 
Engineers and technicians configure the smoke detectors on the mobile launcher platform and open the vehicle assembly building's high bay doors. The crawler transporter, which carries the space shuttle stack to the launch pad, arrives at the vehicle assembly building many hours in advance. Approximately two to three hours before rollout, operators start and stabilize the crawler transporter vehicle. It takes about 45 minutes to get the crawler stabilized underneath the shuttle's mobile launcher platform. At this point, personnel disconnect ground power and use crawler transporter power. The last of the final hour of rollout preparations is retraction of the work platforms that surround the space shuttle while it is in the building. These platforms provide close-up access to all parts of the space shuttle to enable workers to perform their tasks on the vehicle. Most of these platforms are mechanical and are actually part of the vehicle assembly building's structure. movement of the space shuttle rollout occurred at approximately 11.26 p.m. Tuesday evening. The, during the six-hour trip to the launch pad, the space shuttle is mounted on the low mobile launcher platform and is carried to the pad atop the crawler transporter. The mobile launcher platform is a two-story steel structure that was first used in the Apollo Saturn program and then modified for the space shuttle program. Because the launch platform is actually what the space shuttle is launched from at the pad, it has three openings, one for the main engine's exhaust and two for the solid rocket booster's exhaust. Surviving the extreme conditions of a launch is no easy feat for the mobile platform. To keep up with burn damage, technicians must sand and paint the platforms after every launch. Like the mobile launcher platforms, the crawler transporters were originally used during the Apollo era and then modified for shuttle use. The surface area of the crawler is roughly about the size of a baseball diamond. Each crawler weighs about six million pounds unloaded. The crawler has eight tracks, each of which has 57 shoes or cleats. These shoes weigh about one ton each. With the space shuttle aboard, the crawler can creep at a maximum speed of about one mile per hour, only half of its unloaded speed. With the rollout successfully completed, the space shuttle Columbia will now undergo final preparations at the pad. Within the next few hours, the rotating service structure will be moved to enclose the vehicle, which allows workers access to perform their work. The first major order of business will be launch pad validation, which involves connecting and checking interfaces between the space shuttle and the launch pad. Next week, workers will load the hypergolic fuels into the orbital maneuvering system pods and the forward reaction control system. The terminal countdown demonstration test, which is basically a full-run practice countdown involving all essential personnel, including the astronauts, is slated for June 22nd, and the astronaut crew is scheduled to arrive in Florida on June 19th for that test. The flight readiness review is slated for June 23rd, after which shuttle managers will select the official launch date. Technicians at the pad are scheduled to perform ordnance installations on June 29th. Remaining work after that is to close out the aft engine compartment. This involves final vehicle inspections and platform removals. Launch of Columbia is currently targeted for July 8th. The upcoming STS-65 mission promises to be an exciting one. Seven space agencies worldwide involving 13 countries will conduct some 80 experiments during the planned two-week mission. Projects planned include several life sciences experiments, such as the Aquatic Animal Experiment Unit, in which scientists will study the spawning, embryology, and behavior of various newts and fish. There are also over 10 microgravity experiments planned, as well as four major science experiment payloads. In the Air Force Maui Optical Site, or AMIS, calibration test, 
Researchers will test ground-based optical sensors to examine contamination and exhaust plume phenomena. The orbital acceleration research experiment will increase our knowledge of orbital drag technology by shedding some light on the fundamental airflow phenomena in the Earth's upper atmosphere. In the MAST experiment, or military application of ship trails, the flight crew will take high-resolution photographs of ship tracks by aiming their cameras out the aft flight deck windows. From these photographs, researchers will analyze wake formation and dissipation. Mission STS-65 is of special interest to amateur radio operators because on this mission, Columbia will be carrying the shuttle amateur radio experiment too. This involves the operation of an amateur radio by licensed astronauts during the off-duty hours of the mission. On this mission, Columbia will carry a seven-member crew Commander Robert Cabana, Pilot James Halsell, and the five mission specialists Carl Waltz, Rick Hebe, Leroy Chow, Donald Thomas, and Chiaki Mukai. This concludes our coverage of Columbia's rollout to launch pad 39A. On behalf of NASA Select here at the Kennedy Space Center, we thank you for joining us.